we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, help us to receive help this dawn. Help us to realize and become a man of honor. May we act completely to be righteous. May we, our children, receive blessings. May today, may we give benefit to others. And for our country and our people, may we live lives that are patriots. And to bring about the Father's will, may we be instruments of righteousness. Do we have problems? Help us to realize that we're in the way of the wicked. Do I still have grumblings and complainings? I'm outside of Christ, living by my thoughts. Help us to realize this. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. So there's nothing as easy and as good as the way of doing well. But how long have you lived as a peasant that it's so hard to become an aristocrat? Those people who have lived as aristocrats, they can never live as peasants. You know, our country, I don't know how it is that we had peasants and aristocrats that we can realize God's word like this. Is my family a family of peasants or aristocrats? I don't know. If you know, if you ask Koreans, they all say they're aristocrats. But if you look at our history, we're all peasants. Who's the peasant? Every time you become uh, disloyal, then you're a, you become a peasant. You know, under the Japanese, we're we're peasants. You know, under whoever we come under, we're peasants. So if you look at history, who which Korean isn't a peasant? So, you know, there are, there are a lot of idiots who think that having a lot of money is success. If you look into a pig pen, you say, oh, there's lots to eat. No, that's not success. You're still a pig. That's not a man. So God's saying to us, there are two types of men. Do you believe or do you not believe? Some people say, oh, believe, you know, believing is everything. But faith is to be grafted in it's to become a source of blessings but why do you not believe because of your thoughts thoughts means you listen to demons people who do things by their thoughts you see if any of them succeed with your you say you have a good name that you have authority well you're killing your children even more so the evil doing well is disasters. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. So then today, if you either have problems now or there, there are people who make problems today and then there are people who change their problems into blessings and there are people who only plant blessings. That's why we've come to receive help this dawn because it's only by obeying the word that it happens. That's my wealth. Psalms 119 verse 56. My portion is not money, fame, um, health, but obeying God's word. That is my wealth. That's some, If you have that portion, that's someone who can share with others. Without this, you're poor. You may say that you're rich, but it's suffering. So let's find Proverbs chapter 15 verse 6. So in our country, they say there's going to be more and more unemployed. That's God continually calling. So those people who aren't in, un, unemployed and doing something, you know, it's, it's worthless. So then who is it amidst all this who can receive blessings as long as you become righteous? Proverbs chapter 15 verse 6, let's read it together. Great wealth is in the house of the righteous, but trouble is in the income of the wicked. Amen. So there's two types of people only, a believer or an unbeliever. You come to a church just because you're a pastor or an elder or you've believed for a long time, that's not believing. That's You're believing by yourself. You have nothing to do with God. That's someone who is evil. That is the Pharisee Sadducee. Who is the Pharisee Sadducee? Who just 
Because someone who's just a viewer of the of the word, who just stares at it, but someone someone who can't say amen, who can't make it theirs, someone who scorns God's word, that's a Pharisee Sadducee. They are they have more eight more demons than an unbeliever. So they're worse. God's word. It's this word that is good, that it's a word of love. It is the best word. And yet there are all these nasty curses inside of here. You know, if I'm not righteous, then I wouldn't even be able to mimic what's said here. So at Busan First Church, where we easily listen to this, but those people go to the wrong fake church, they listen to the tapes and they get shocked. Because there is such there is such rebuke in here. So what is that? So a, a pot that you've burnt, you don't just wash it. You know, you need that steel wool and you need to scrub it. That's how much we're, we're steeped in our, in our stain. So there's two types of people. There's the evil and the righteous. What's inside of the house of the righteous? And what's inside of the house of the wicked? So what's inside of your house? Some people say, oh, I have a lot of money. You know, I have these these antiques that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's nothing as tormenting as that. There's no one who is suffering as much as that person. Because wherever they go, they're worrying, oh, will it get cracked? Will robbers come and steal it? They say that we have this in our country now, but I haven't seen it or, you know, experienced it. But... In overseas, they buy something, an, an expensive antique, and then they entrust it to the bank, paying money for it. You know, why do that? Why pay such an expensive amount to pay it? And then you have to entrust it to the bank and you worry about it and you suffer because of it. That's the biggest idiot. At least if you didn't buy it, if someone else had it, then it'd always be mine. You wouldn't need to have security for it. You wouldn't have to be concerned about it. But there's all sorts of idiots. So what's that? It's the money that you've put in the bank. Oh, well, Pastor, when I need to use it, then I can use it. Well, what does it say here? It says great wealth is trouble. So you know what I say to you? You know, the, the, the crown of England, that's mine. But I just, I always leave it there in the museum. God says it's according to your heart. When you really have this, then he gives you that blessing. But because you don't repent, because you're not righteous, you say it, but then you say, oh, but it actually belongs to someone else. This is why it doesn't work. This is why you can't receive blessings. So in my house, you know, because I'm talking about something overseas, it seems very far off from me, but what's inside of my house? The, the money that I've hidden away in a blanket? That, that check that I've hidden under the bed? Is that my wealth? What, what is my wealth? If that drags off my heart, then it's trouble. I can't be tied up to anything in my house. That is someone who is righteous. If my heart, Proverb, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, wherever my heart is, that's where my treasure is. So if you watch TV or look at the newspaper, whichever house you go to, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. God's not first. They don't seek his kingdom righteousness first. But that child's kindergarten photo, if, they stick, if they've stuck that up and they've put that up as the best thing, that child will either die or they'll have to abandon that child. You see those children that are put into childcare, they're not like that. Those households that bring the children to entrust them to the childcare, you see them on TV. And they show their house and they've got all the kindergarten photos. God says, before they're killed, he makes them, you know, put into some duty, uh, care, some care facility, you know. So what is it that I find most precious? Where is my heart? That's what appears in your house. So you'll either kill that thing or he will bring so much suffering. And he's waiting for you to change your heart. And so then the parents, once they entrust them 
and they say we'll come back in a year to to pick to get them. That's that's their thoughts. Their thoughts will ruin them. If you idolize your child, instead of after one year, they get more and more rude, so they can't even come. Get them at all, but if you put God first, the Father will change everything so that you can go get them back, and then you'll be released. But people don't know this, so whichever household you go to, and you see what is it that person's making most important, and you can see they're going to suffer so much. They're going to suffer until they change that. Many parents they pretend to love their children yet kill them. Who is that? The evil. They kill three and four generations, and yet they don't know. And then they expect them to do well, so they're mistaken in themselves. So then, what were my ancestors were like? Well, that's how I was raised. So I have to repent of mine in order to be released. I have to be released of how my ancestors idolized me. And so then, God, He will, He will, He will release us. Oh, I wasn't raised like that, and my parents were so righteous. No, I was raised. Being the object of that, so we have to repent of that to be released. You say, "Oh, time's past." You know, the worldly demons say time is medicine, but God says never. The time may have passed. You may have forgotten Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty. But He says, "I remember your sins and your ancestors' sins." So we have to be released from this. So then today, in Proverbs chapter fifteen, verse six, God's giving us this word: Whatever problem in your household, if you're righteous, He it will all change. In the house of the righteous, so there's no one righteous on this earth. Romans chapter three verse ten: There is no one righteous. So then, who is it that becomes righteous? We all have to repent to become righteous. So when we look at the Bible, there were there are two kings put in one place. There's King Saul. He, you know, wants to kill his son-in-law, and then. There's someone who's done so many evil things, which is King David. King Saul, he didn't do as many evil things as David. You know, David, he even killed his servant and took took his servant's wife. You know, one is worse, which is David, and Saul's less bad. And so there's these, there are these two kings, but Saul didn't repent, and because he disobeyed, he, his underlings, his servants, his children, they're all killed. Even though David did worse things, when one of his servants came and pierced his heart. And he said, "You're evil because you've taken someone else's wife." He said this in front of the king, and yet he accepted that exactly. And David, who repented, he lived, and his name was,、um, you know, re- renowned. But it's not who sins more. We all have sinned the same. But those who can't, you know, those who, those who may, you know, try and hold back, you know, they may sin less. They they may seem to be w- w- less bad, but the one who repents, the righteous lives. The one who doesn't dies. That's that's all the Bible's saying. So you say, oh, my husband's had an affair. I've had an affair. If your husband has had an affair, why? Because why did he have an affair? Because they're the same. Well, you say, but I didn't have an affair. All you did was hold back. But spouses are the same. That's why he's given that spouse to you. So spouses aren't two; they're one. Matthew chapter nineteen, verse forty-five. You say, "Oh, it's my husband who had an affair." You say, "Well, I didn't." No, you're the same. You know, you can't have a a, a jeep. Tire here, and then a, t- a taxi tire there. No, it's the same. So don't criticize. If they're like that, then it's for me to repent. You say, ah,、oh, you know, it's the wife who should live, but the husband who should die. No. So how much haven't we realized properly in the word, and we keep doing the wrong thing? And you say, oh, I can't live with that person because they they had an affair. So the household of the righteous and the household of the wicked. You know, each household we all have a lot of problems. Every time you have a problem, Psalm chapter fifty verse fifteen, he says, "Call me if you have a problem, come to me," because he is the one who's made all these problems. So, if you have all these problems, it's because you've departed from God. 
If you depart from him, then you have problems. If you come back to him, then those problems become answers. So if you come to your parents, your clothes are washed. But if you go out by yourself, then your clothes become beggarly. So in the house of the righteous, there is great wealth. Is there a great treasure or not? So if you have a lot of worries in your household, you worry about your eldest child, your youngest child, this child, that child, your your business, it means you're, you're evil. You are not righteous. So as long as we become righteous, then God will change everything to blessings. He will change everything to treasures. So if my household's filled with trash, all my children are useless, there's not one person who's a man, that's because you're evil. As long as you're righteous, the Father says He'll change everything. So no matter how dirty this container, even if it's a trash can, as long as we sterilize it, you know, I've seen during the Korean War, you know, the chamber pots, they were used as potties, but they also used them as a pot to cook food. I saw them at the Nakdong River, the, these chamber pots. You know, there were a lot of people who'd cook their food in there. I saw them with my own eyes. So these chamber pots, well, when you use it to, to poo and wee, then it's a chamber pot. But then if you boil it and sterilize it, then you can use it for food. So if your household's filled with troubles and your wealth is all a problem, well, if you're righteous, he says he'll change it to treasures. So you say, oh, my child's the problem, my husband or wife's the problem. No, it's just me that has to become righteous. So it's God who helps at dawn. And by how? How? By solving the problem of sin so that you can become righteous. That's Acts chapter 20, verse 21. So God helps at dawn. If you want to receive his help, the only way is to go toward him. The only way to go toward him is by repentance. Acts chapter 26, verse 20. That's what repentance is. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Well, repentance is only by the blood of Christ. Four-step repentance. So if you're sitting there doing four-step repentance, God will help you at dawn. And he will make us into someone who is righteous. So if you're righteous, everything inside of your household changes to treasures. So your eldest, your youngest, your in-laws, he will change them all into treasures. So it, you, everything does well. This word of truth, why doesn't it become mine? I think that I've repented, but when God looks at you, you haven't. So let's now go the right way. So all we have to do now is repent. How precious is it that he will say to do it Without ceasing, how precious is it that he says in the Lord's Prayer that it's our food, Matthew chapter 6. So if we repent, it change, we change to treasures. But if we don't repent, it changes to, to anxieties and, and worries and troubles. So we have difficulties because we haven't become righteous in front of God. Is this our man? So when our country is in such trouble, you know, we have all these society problems, all these families are breaking up. All we have to do is become righteous. So, so then the churches have to become witnesses and show others. David, you know, he took his, his, his servant's wife and sent him to war and killed him. You know, couldn't we just have hidden this and just... Then, then David would seem to be so praiseworthy, better than Saul, but no. Even though you do worse things, all you have to do is repent. That doesn't mean go and do bad things, but after you repent, God will lead my heart so that I won't do those things. So just because you're in the trash can doesn't mean you're trash. Even if gold goes into the trash can, if you take it out, it's gold. So wherever you go that's evil in the world, if you go as gold, you know, a torch, if it's if it's shining light wherever it goes, it's not dark. It will be light. That's the way God wants you to live. It's not to avoid the, the reality and go off to the moon by yourself. Wherever you go to shine light, that's someone who is righteous. So as long as you become righteous, all your worries and anxieties, you say, oh, I've got so many children, so I'm tormented, or I've got too much wealth, so I'm tormented. No, he says, I'll change it all. I'll change it into treasures. You know, I experience how God's word, it's so exact. There are so many treasures. 
If your near park, you see everything near pass to park, it's a treasure. You, you're all treasures. If you depart, then you're trash. But as long as you're inside, as long as I'm inside, if pass to park goes outside, then I'm trash. As long as you're in Christ, you're a treasure. As long as you're inside, as long as you're righteous, then you're a treasure. Where is, why is it that wherever you go, you have no work? It's because you keep going outside of Christ. That's why you have no work. You know, you yourself are tormented. Who's going to like that torment? So go inside of Christ, then you'll do well. I'm, I'm just talking about what we see on the street. But it's the same within your households. You say, I have heartache because of my children. No, if you're righteous, they become treasures. Oh, my spouse relationship, it's like a living hell. No, if you're righteous, it becomes a treasure. It's because you're evil that you're both tormented. So something this good, he helps us each dawn. He says, I'll help you the whole day. He says to receive these blessings. Why is it you hate this and you don't want to repent? I just can't understand. So then the evil, if they business does well and they have a lot of income, income or they got to high place and they succeeded, no. That's troubles. So let's see what else it says. It says, but trouble. Great wealth is in the house of the righteous, but trouble is in the income of the wicked. So if you say that you have suffering, are you righteous or are you wicked? So now you know. So it means you haven't repented. So at this dawn, when God helps us, he helps us only those who repent. Why is it that he only helps through repentance? Because he wants to change all of your suffering to treasures. He wants to make what's evil to become righteous. You'll say, oh, there's nothing as big of, of as a headache as children. I don't know who's taught me this. You know, everyone's united in that in Korea. It's funny how they're united in that, you know, to only have one or two children. All the demons, they're united in that. Who's that for? So it's just comfortable for me. So what happens to that one child? You know, in their 20s, 30s, they die. And then that's when the, the parents, they, they become crazy and they kick up such a fuss. I'm sure there are people like that here. There's so many people like that in Korea. When does God say, if you have a lot of children, that it's suffering? It's suffering because I'm evil. If you're righteous, they're all treasures. So then you and I, in our reality, you know, your children are torment, you have a bad spouse relationship, all your all your wealth is a is a headache. It's because I'm evil. Even if you have a lot of income, it's a it's trouble. But if there's none, that's trouble too. That's suffering too. So you see someone who's from Chungcheon province, he says he says, so, so it's not Pastor Parker, does it? If you become righteous, it's God who changes it to treasures. So it's in Christ that you become righteous. Outside of Christ, you become wicked. So going outside of Christ is curses. This dawn, this precious word, so whether it's my troubles, my suffering, or my household suffering, or whether my children are tormented or my husband's tormented, it's because you're evil. If you become righteous, your eyes are fixed, your ears are fixed, your heart's already become fixed. You have to change your heart to change your eyes and your ears. So if we fix our heart, then it's God who guards over, rules over our hearts and we have all joy and peace. So within this peace, then God, he will give you unlimitedly. Because even if you have it, you'll be at peace. But if you're tormented, whatever is given, he has to take it away. So in your, in your present life, what is it that you're suffering from? Well, then you're evil. If my children are being released and they're suffering, oh, then, then they're evil. So in, if you're evil in your life, you start with grumblings and complainings. Jude chapter 1 verse 16 to 19. You have excuses, you have envyings, you have jealousies, you have grumblings, complainings. Then you have to realize, oh, I'm a demon without faith. I'm outside of Christ. That person, if they're by themselves, they say, I'm alone, I'm lonely. That person's evil. 
Someone who God is with, they have the Holy Spirit who is their friend. So they don't have this loneliness. Do you know how good it is, how satisfied they are? So if I'm left in the room by myself, I don't even remember to eat because it's so good. And then I end up so, you know, I end up with no strength and then and then I realize, oh, I'm hungry. So that's, I have such a good friend and I have such a good um, spouse and I have such a good um, parent. And so that's the life of the righteous. They're filled with happiness and satisfaction. You'll say, oh, why is it you don't have friends? Well, the Holy Trinity is my friend. It's so good. Why would I want, why would I want to go and meet some wicked friend and try to keep having friends? Those people who are young, they say, oh, I still have my, you know, friend from elementary school. You see if you end up becoming friends with them. You know, if you're close to them, they'll, they'll say something, you know, they'll say that they're dying, take off with your money. And that's, that's how it ends. So it all ends with money. I've lived my whole life and that's what it's like. Those who say they're so close to you, you know, they do that and then they depart. And then new friends, they end like that too. So after after my 60s, you know, they ask, who's your friend? And I can't even name one. And so then they say, you know, before you die, if you at least have five friends, that, that's success. How can the evil be your friend? If, if they stick to you, they're going to harm you. So don't be mistaken. After you're retired or, you know, someone, your, you know, someone, you know, your husband or your child or your in-law, they'll, they'll want to meet friends because they're alone, they're lonely. You see these people with problems. After they're retired, they don't have friends, you know, they don't, they don't have, you know, any partners. You see those people. You see them ending up smoking. The people are to be ruined. They do ruinous things. What's what's a cigarette? It's money. You know, you're, you're crazy if you're burning money, but that's what they do. They're crazy. But on top of that, they harm their body. So they're completely crazy. But if you look at that and you don't know and you say, oh, I feel so sorry for them. That's someone who's so crazy. Why does this happen? Because you're evil, you don't know. You know, and if you're looking at them and saying, oh, you're evil. You say you don't have money. Why are you burning it? Why are you harming your own body? And with that, with that smoke, you also harm others. That's what the evil are. Does that mean it's impossible for them? No. Even now, if you do forced their repentance, you go inside of Christ, then God will make you new. So if your husband or your family, if they feel lonely, to say that loneliness, no friend can release you from that. The only way is by God. If you repent to God, you know, don't do it if it's lost to you. But if it benefits you, do it. So then how should I repent? Well, like this, how it's written here, to read this and say, I have this. You know, nine out of ten will say, oh, what do you mean I have that? I don't have that. But after a few days, they'll say, I actually have more sin than this. And they'll change. That's when they'll live. God will save them. So we're not to worry. If we're righteous, then we'll change to treasure. If there's treasures in each household, then the neighborhood is filled with treasures. If each neighborhood is filled with treasures, then Korea is filled with treasures. There's no, there's no problem in saving Korea as long as we're in Christ then we'll live. Is this our man? So let's live not worrying. The righteous is someone who is happy. Romans chapter 4 verse 6. The righteous are happy. So if we become happy this dawn, then our children become treasures. If our children are treasures, everywhere they go, they're popular. But a child who's su who is suffering, even if they go elsewhere to someone else's place, they're suffering. So don't make them like that. Oh, my daughter, you know, 
they went, they got married, and now oh, we'll change them to treasures. Oh, my, my child's gone somewhere, they're suffering. Change them into treasures for me to become a treasure and my children to become treasures and our country to be filled with treasures. So let's receive the help of four-step repentance. So what worries do you have in your household today? It's over. All we have to do now is repent the whole day long. If we have problems, if we have sufferings and troubles, by four-step repentance, it will change to, tre to treasures. Let's change it all to treasures. Let's pass it to our children. And we have to share this with others. God is so good. Straight away it'll happen. Let's all pray. Why are you why do you have these troubles? I have these troubles because I'm wicked. Everything that you've bought, you know, there are people who come to me for counseling. They say, Oh, I bought this, but it's not being sold, so I'm you know, I, I'm tormented and I bought that and it's not being sold. You know, they're saying that it's because of this of this carriage. But when I look at them, it's because they're evil. All they have to do is change to be righteous. You know, where does it say the righteous can't ride in a carriage? All you have to do is change to become righteous. All you have to do is repent. But they say, oh, it's because, it's because I'm riding a carriage. That's why it's not selling. When I see... When I see when they see these these ridiculous things, I, I think, is that someone who truly believes in Jesus? But we'll all do well. You say something's not working out, it's because you're evil. If you become righteous, everything will do well. It will become better. But God, by such a precious word, we in our hopelessness, you know, we're all worrying and we're all anxious. But let's, we give thanks for giving us such a bright way. May our husbands become treasures. May our, may our children become treasures. Everything that we do may become treasures. May we receive the promise this dawn of everything doing well. Everywhere we go, if I am a treasure, they all want to hold on to me. And they all see me as precious. May we all change to become people like this. Surely this dawn, we believe we will change. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. <laughs>